Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the new updates introduced in Core Prism 2.1, including the much awaited MIDI drag and drop feature that allows you to create presets from existing MIDI files. There's also a brand new preset layout with a new best of category, preset names, and a matrix view for the pattern generators and velocity curve, which provide a clear image of how your settings are manipulating the velocity of your chords and melodies. Let's dive straight into creating some new presets using MIDI files. We'll be using Ableton, but rest assured these new features work the same in all DAWs. First, I'll just select the default preset in Chord Prism, but you can also import new chords to any preset, of course. I have this MIDI chord progression here that I recorded the other day on my keyboard. Here's how it looks and sounds, just running through a piano normally. I'm using Arturia's Piano V2 for the sound. You'll notice that it's slightly strummed as well because I played it in live. This is fine as Chord Prism's import feature takes strumming into account. To import the progression into Chord Prism, all you need to do is export your MIDI as a MIDI file, which can be done easily in every DAW, and then drag it from wherever you saved it on your computer into the Chord Prism interface. The keys will light up to indicate that the import has been successful and the chords will be distributed among the seven white key slots. I'll lower the octave as well. Because this is a 4 chord progression and there are 7 slots, there will be 3 duplicates, which is actually pretty useful because we can then slightly tweak those to create variations of the main chords. It's super easy to do this by heading into the chord editor and changing around some octaves and adding some notes. This will make the preset much more musical and useful. We'll also add some random strumming to bring the chords to life. One of the best aspects of the MIDI import feature is that it detects the key of your chord progression and places you in that key immediately, in this case C sharp minor. This means that the smart scale and pattern generator will adapt to your imported chords. Let's first try using the smart scale which adapts the white keys on the right to individual notes from the key. This makes it so easy to play in some beautiful melodies. Remember that you can also momentarily tweak all of your chords with the key shifter black keys in the left octave. I'll test this with 7ths and 9ths for example. Experimenting with these while playing can take your progressions to a whole new level and get you to come up with things you wouldn't normally come up with. You can easily change the key shifter setting by right clicking or control clicking them. Now that we have a nice sounding preset, it's easy to save it with the icon here and the preset will appear in the user preset category. Let's now use the black keys on the right to launch the pattern generator. You can, as always, control click or right click the pattern generator notes to edit their settings. This is a great point to talk about the new velocity matrix. The velocity settings in Chord Prism come into effect when your DAW is playing, so I'll just hit play and hold down this first pattern generator. The matrix that appears at the left shows how the velocity is affecting your pattern in 16th notes. It's also visually responsive to changes you make, such as changing the peak velocity or tweaking the range.
It's crazy how much these velocity patterns enhance and even humanize the patterns. You can also see the ARP pattern appear in the matrix if you hover over the pattern generator settings. The core generator also has a new velocity matrix that appears on the right when you hover over its velocity settings. We'll set up another quick MIDI loop to test this. We'll also turn off the strum. The velocity setting in the chord generator affects the chord repeats and the step sequencer. Let's first try with some repeats. I'll set the repeats to 16th notes to clearly hear every single velocity change. Now we'll turn off repeats and edit the velocity while the sequencer is active. With the sequencer active, you'll hear that it's affecting all of the 16th notes in the sequence as well. So what you're getting is a dynamic combination of the enabled sequence steps, the gate setting and the velocity settings. A lot of our users were asking for these velocity settings to be more visual and we've really enjoyed implementing this change. One more highlight of version 2.1 is the new preset category Best Of, which contains our favorite presets to date. We've also renamed every single preset in the genre categories to make it easier for you to remember your favorites. You'll find about 100 more presets in the Core Prism 1 category that can bring you tons of inspiration for new progressions. Just because we're so excited about the MIDI drag and drop feature, here's another quick example of using it with a simpler, more pop-friendly chord progression. We again have one pre-prepared here, and let's give it a quick listen. We'll export the MIDI file of this progression to our computer. Then we'll drag the MIDI file into Chord Prism, and like last time, all of the chord slots will be filled, and Chord Prism will detect the key, in this case, E flat minor. To test out these new chords, we'll use augmented strings by Arturia. We'll also tweak some of the key shifters. Playing additional notes into the chords using the Smart Scale feature really sounds incredible. Thanks for watching our overview of the new Chord Prism 2.1 update. We hope these features allow you to turn your chord progressions into incredible presets. Happy composing from all of us at the Chord Prism team and see you soon.